Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Erin Keim and I'm one of the providers here at Pediatric and Adult Vision Care. March is a very special month for us here because it's Brain Injury Awareness Month. What a lot of people don't realize is that a lot of times in people who sustain a brain injury, vision is oftentimes affected. So I'm the provider here that focuses on those patients and as a result I've become very, very passionate about this topic. Okay, so what I've learned in my time through seeing these patients is that it can have a tremendous impact on your life, okay? I've also learned though that there's a lot of myths and things people don't know out there floating around. So today there's different types of brain injury. I'm gonna focus on concussions and I wanna talk to you about the five big things I think that you need to know when it comes to concussions. So let's go ahead and take a closer look. First thing I want you to know is that concussions are not always obvious, okay? So if I ask you, picture someone who's sustaining a concussion, you're gonna picture someone knocked out, right? Laying on the field unconscious. And while we can lose consciousness when we get a concussion, over 90% of people that have concussions don't actually lose consciousness, okay? The other thing you're gonna think of is what? Two football players going head to head, right? So you're gonna be think about someone hitting their head, but the truth is we don't always even need to hit our head to get a concussion. Think about someone in a car accident, right? We talk a lot about whiplash. In whiplash, my body is stopping, but my head continues to move, and that jostles my brain. So that can also give us a concussion. The other interesting thing, too, when it comes to diagnosing concussions is that there's no MRI, CT, X-ray, or blood work that's going to show markers for a concussion, right? They haven't quite found that yet. So everything, all of your testing can come back normal, but you can still have a concussion, okay? So let's look at number two. Number two is that concussions are actually very common, okay? So think about this with me. Who can get a concussion? Anyone, right? Very good. They can be young, right? Old, you can fall during sports, trip on the sidewalk, right? It's very easy to sustain a concussion. Now, it is tricky to really get numbers regarding this because a lot of concussions go un underreported, okay? But they're estimating now that one in three people are gonna have a concussion by the time they're 21, okay? So that's pretty huge. We know the latest numbers say in one year there's roughly 3.6 million brain injuries, traumatic brain injuries that are reported. To put this in perspective a little bit, if you combined it, all of breast cancer, HIV, um, and MS, those diagnoses are about 1.6 million, okay? But with concussions, we're talking 3.6 million. So that's a lot of people, right? Okay, good. So number three we're looking at here is that concussions are serious, okay? So when we talk about traumatic brain injury, there's a lot of different subcategories. Concussion is only one of those subcategories. As a result, concussions often get labeled as mild traumatic brain injury. But I just wanna clarify, this word mild, right, does not mean that concussions aren't serious, okay? When you get a concussion, the energy levels in your brain are actually de depleted, and the signaling between the brain cells is also decreased, okay? So we're talking about some serious side effects here. Now, as long as we catch them and they're diagnosed, we can treat them appropriately and a lot of times get you back to normal levels. So I don't wanna scare you, but I don't want you to hear that word mild and think that they're not a big deal, okay? Awesome, let's look at number four. Size does not determine severity, okay? So a lot of times people think depending how hard you hit determines whether or not you're gonna recover fast, right? But to be honest, the most important thing that determines symptoms and how quickly we recover is actually the medical history. Okay, when we think about medical history, we know patients that have already had concussions are much more likely to have uh, more severe side effects with later concussions. Okay, but also a patient's medical history prior to a concussion. So like in my case, let's say a patient already had what we call a lazy eye, right? Or already had trouble with their visual system. That system is more vulnerable and therefore more likely to be affected more severely with a concussion, okay? Awesome, we're on to number five. I know you guys can't wait. Vision matters. Does this one surprise you, right? So um, this is a really, really big one, okay? So we know that over 50% of the brain is either directly or indirectly 
involved in the visual process. So it's no surprise that when we injure the brain, over 50% of people have trouble with their vision, okay? And that's, and that's a very low statistic. I'm being very conservative there. Um, in fact, even some studies show that in adolescents, over 70% of adolescents had vision problems after a concussion. And when we're talking about vision in this case, we're not just talking about how clear and blurry things are like we are with glasses. It goes far beyond that to how well the eyes are working together. So this is going to show up in symptoms like blurry vision when reading or double vision when reading or trouble concentrating in school. Definitely going to drive headaches, right? So this is the um, student that has gotten a concussion. They feel okay and then they go back to school and now they're going to have a lot of trouble, right? So we can see vision is absolutely crucial in these types of patients so if you or someone you know sustain a concussion nothing to be afraid of but just make sure you're getting the correct care and come see me so I can check out your vision any other questions let me know hopefully this has been helpful for you guys have a good one